Nice catch, Blanco Nino. Hey everyone, Kyle here, back with another Pokemon challenge. Last time I did a standard hardcore Nuzlocke, Pokemon Fire Red, and it felt a little bit too easy. So I've decided to up the difficulty substantially. Today we're going to see if I can beat Pokemon Platinum using only Poison type Pokemon with hardcore Nuzlocke rules. Platinum is my favorite game, and it's also one of the more difficult games. The Poison type is arguably one of the worst, as they have the second lowest base stat total, and prior to the addition of Fairy type, Poison is only super effective against Grass types. On top of that, it's completely walled by Steel types. The silver lining here is the Pokemon that I have access to are pretty solid, and these are the fully evolved Pokemon that I'll have available to me. However, I can't obtain a Gengar as it's a trade evolution, and while you can technically catch one in the old Chateau, you can't do so until after you get the National Dex. I also cannot get Skunk Tank, as it's exclusive to Diamond version. Let's go over the rules real quick. I can only use Poison type Pokemon in battle. If a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead, and I have to box or release it. I have to nickname all of my Pokemon. Battles have to be on set mode. I can't use items in battle except for hell items, and there's no over leveling. I start off by naming myself after my masculinity, Toxic. Then I demonstrate my maturity by naming my rival Poop. I consider using a randomizer to replace our starter with our eventual starter, Badoo, but Badoo is available pretty early on, so I decided against it, and I picked Chimchar. I choose Chimchar so Poop would eventually have a Napoleon later on, which gains the steel typing. I figured that would make it the most difficult. After the obligatory early game shenanigans, I make my way north of Jubilife City, where I can finally get my starter Pokemon. I catch her and I name her Ivy, and put Chimchar in his new home, the PC. Ivy has a jolly nature, plus speed, minus special attack. Not really the best, as Roserade's best statistic is special attack, but I'll make do. The extra speed is nice, so it could be worse. Unfortunately, Badoo evolves via happiness. So in between training, I run around Jubilife City like a crazy person to make sure I can evolve her into a Roselia before the first gym. Don't worry though, it's only 38,000 steps. Training was another issue. I had to encounter low level Bidoof and hope that they would activate our poison point ability in order to actually win a fight, and I had to heal after every battle. After a few levels she can finally train normally, and I head up to Ravage Path where there's Psyduck to train against, but also our second team member, Zubat. I catch her and I name her Guano. Guano has a brave nature which is plus attack and minus special defense which is awesome. After some tedious grinding, it's time to face our rival with our real team. He leads off with Starly and I send in Guano. Starly hits us with Growl a bunch of times and we're doing nothing with Leech Life. So I swap in Ivy to finish it off, but it ends up KOing itself from confusion anyways. Poop then sends in Piplup, or should I say, Pooplup. But because it's a water type, Ivy has no problem taking it out. After the battle, all of my cardio pays off and Ivy evolves into a Rosalia. I make my way over to Ouroburg City and after coasting through the gym trainers and learning the move Mega Drain, I take on Rourke whose Pokemon all go down in one hit. This is going to be an easy run. I can feel it. Nothing can stop us. We. Are. Invincible. Oh, while taking on the Galactic Grunts, Guano was hit by two crits from Fury Swipes and taken out. I considered resetting right there. As without Crobat, this run might not even be possible, but I decide to press on and see if I can beat Mars, because at least there are two more encounters coming up before the second gym. I make my way to the Valley Windworks, and I take on Mars, who immediately taunts me with her own Zubat. It, it's too soon. My strategy here was to paralyze the Zubat with Sunspore, and then hit it with a Leech Seed to heal up whenever it does manage to connect through Paralysis. Then we're going to set up as many Groats as we can so I can hit her Perugly with Mega Drain and heal whatever damage it does to me. The plan goes out the window pretty quickly, because Zubat doesn't get paralyzed one time, and it hits us with Bite over and over and over again, until Ivy is way too weak, at which point she stands no chance against Perugly. And there goes attempt number one. Oof. On to attempt number two. I forgot to record myself catching the starter, but Ivy has an impish nature this time, plus defense and minus special attack, which is terrible. But I get the necessary steps in in order to evolve her at level 6. This time around, Guano has a neutral nature, which is fine with me. I'm going to skip ahead to where we left off with attempt number 1 because nothing notable happens in between here and then. I switch out Guano this time against the Galactic Grunts because I can't afford to risk losing her. She's going to be the key to a few upcoming gym battles. It's time to get revenge on Mars. I still feel like the best strategy is the same as last time but this time I remember to put an Orin Berry on Ivy. Her Impish Nature actually helps out a little bit here, although her Zubat once again doesn't get paralyzed one time. We take it down, and Perugly comes out, and this time we are in a much better situation. 
Ivy is able to tank a few hits before healing up a ton with Mega Drain, and her Perugly goes down. Now in a turn of Forest, there's a 4% chance that I'll encounter a Ghastly, and a 1% chance for a Dustox to appear. The problem is, you have to travel with Cheryl, who will force double battles and her chance he can complicate things, although it can't hit Ghastly. I decide to race through the forest and try to avoid as many encounters as I can. On a side note, I can catch a Cascoon here, and I do encounter a few. However, it isn't a poison type yet, so there's nothing forcing me to try and catch one. And on the Eterna side of Route 205, there's a 1% chance to encounter a Dust Ox as well, so I decide to go for that encounter instead. And as I was thinking about all of this, I realized I could have caught Ghastly in Eterna since I wasn't catching Cascoon, but... Oh well. I head into the grass and I wasn't even recording yet, and the literal first Pokemon I run into <laughs> is a Dust Ox. Okay, but this Dust Ox only knows two moves. Confusion, and Gust, both of which are super effective against our team. It takes Ivy down to just 5 HP, and it will die on the next turn to Leech Seed, so I have one more chance. I'm also risking Ivy's life here, but I realize that I have a Net Ball, so I throw it, and... <laughs> yes! Wow. That could have been tragic for so many reasons. I name him Mothra, which doesn't really fit the team's theme of poisonous things, but whatever. Mothra has a modest nature, plus special attack and minus attack might be the best nature it can get. That's an insanely lucky combination of events. Our next level cap is 22, which is perfect, because it means I can evolve Guano into a Gold Bat. It's time to take on Gardenia. Turtwig comes out and survives on a sliver from a wing attack and then sets up a Reflect. If Guano had a brave nature, like an attempt one, it would have died before it set up the Reflect, but oh well. Fortunately, her team can't do much of anything to Guano. A Roserade attempts to paralyze us, but the Cherry Berry I equipped heals it. I was disappointed to find out that I hadn't taken enough steps to evolve into a Crobat after leveling up when the battle ended, and the next major battle can be quite difficult. Now, I don't necessarily have a set rule for level caps on major battles outside of the gyms in the Elite Four. However, I do try to stay at the same level as bosses or a rival whenever possible, in order to make the battles a little more difficult. Jupiter's Gun Tank is notoriously difficult. Thankfully, one of its four moves can't affect us. But this thing can lower our defense with Screech, our accuracy with Smokescreen, and the real threat Night Slash. Night Slash is a 70 base power attack with a high critical hit ratio, and Skun Tank itself has pretty solid base attack, speed, and HP at this point of the game. Before that though, I did head over to Old Chateau and caught our fourth team member, Ghastly, whom I named Monoxide. He has a timid nature, plus speed, and minus attack, which is great for later on. But early on, the only moves Ghastly and Haunter learn are physical moves like Sucker Punch. After grinding the rest of the team up and defeating the Grunts, it's time to take on Jupiter. I planned for a while, and I realized that my best bet was to teach Guano the move Pluck so I can steal its Citrus Berry. Unfortunately, the combination of hitting itself in Confusion and Wing Attack puts it into Berry range. So, there goes that. Thankfully, we get good Confusion luck, and she goes down rather easily. We make our way to Heart Home City, and while battling some of the trainers in the Pokemon Center, Monoxide evolves into Haunter. We head to the gym, and I must have forgot to record it, but Guano evolved into a Crobat, which is huge, because next up is the Ghost Gym, and she knows the move Bite. I also decided to equip her with a Dread Plate. First up is her Duskull, which is pretty bulky, so it's going to take two hits to KO. But as long as it doesn't go for Will-O-Wisp, we're okay. It just used Future Sight, and then we take it down. This Mage just comes in next, and I decided to go for a Confuse Ray because I didn't know if a Bite would take it into Barry range or not. The PTSD from the Jupiter battle kicks in, and I go for Pluck, even though Guano's HP is almost full. And she hits us with a Confuse Ray, but Guano is too smart. She breaks through and lands a Bite to KO Miss Mages. Blasting his Haunter, and Guano snaps out of Confusion just in time, and Oko's with a Bite, which earns us the win. We continue on, and Poop ambushes us and demands another battle. At this point, we don't really have a great answer for flying Pokemon, and Asteravia knows Endeavor, which he uses on Guano after surviving at just 2 HP, and I know he has Quick Attack, and now we have to switch Guano out. So I swap into Minoxide, who can't get hit by it. Unfortunately, the only move we can hit with is Sucker Punch, so I have to hope it tries to attack us in the next 5 turns, and thankfully it does, and we take it out. Next in is Primplup, so I send an Ivy and decide to set up a couple of growths, even though I know it has Peck. But one Giga Drain heals us near full HP and takes out his starter. Ponyto's next, and I decide to stay in because of the special attack boost, and know we can't be taken out by Ember, even if it crits. Giga Drain does massive damage, and we finish it off on the next turn. Last up is his own Roselia, so I send in Mothra, who gets paralyzed and leech seated, but breaks through and lands a crit Psy Beam, and one more finishes off Poop. Nothing notable happens until we get to Veilstone City, so in order to avoid making these videos an hour long, I'm going to skip some random trainer battles unless something worth discussing happens. Next up is the Fighting Gym, and Maylene has a Lucario, which is part Steel. We do have a few team members that can deal with fighting type Pokemon very well, and Poison does resist her fighting moves. However, this thing is still pretty scary, as Metal Claw can raise its attack, 
Force Palm can paralyze us, Drain Punch can heal it, and Bone Rush is a ground type move. But thankfully our secondary typings and Monoxide's levitate ability mitigate our ground weakness a bit. On top of that, Metatite has Confusion which is super effective against everyone on the team, and both Metatite and Machoke have Rock Tomb for Guano. This should be an interesting one. I decide in spite of Rock Tomb, Guano is the best bet here. And after Calyx, I know Wing Attack is guaranteed to Oko the Metatite. Machoke is always a 2 hit KO though, and it hits us with Rock Tomb, but Guano is still faster and we take it out. Unfortunately now her Lucario is faster and it hits us with a Metal Claw as we go for Pluck to try and take its Citrus Berry, but as I'm watching the footage I realize that it must not have had one. I go for Confuse Rain, Guano is now in crit range, so I decide to send in Mothra. It lands a Metal Claw which raises its attack, and then Psy Beam does basically nothing. I decide to stay in or risk a crit, and Mothra survives on just 14 HP and takes it down to just a sliver. I send him an Oxide even though his defense is very low, but Lucario is still confused and just takes itself out in the next turn. That could have been bad, but we managed to escape unscathed, but Steel Pokemon are going to be a real problem. I make it down to Pastoria where I cosplay as our next encounter, a Krogunk. I head over to Route 212 and I catch her and I name her Dart. Dart has a rash nature, which is plus special attack and minus special defense, and I considered making her a special attacker because she does learn nasty plot, but I need the physical move she can learn more. Next is a crucial encounter. Everyone on the team is either 2 or 4 times weak to Psychic, and we're going to need someone to counter that. Enter Skaroopy, who evolves into a Drapion and becomes part Dark type. Drapion is an amazing Pokemon. It learns a lot of great moves, and currently, everyone on the entire team has pathetic physical defense stats, so its base 110 defense will be huge. The problem is, according to Hardcore Nuzlocke rules, if it runs away, I can't catch one. I decided to allow one attempt per Great Marsh area to give myself a reasonable shot, but that wasn't necessary as I managed to catch the first one I encounter. I was looking up scorpion names to name it after, and most of the deadliest are just named after the location that they're found in, or the size or shape of their tail. But then... I came across this one, the Death Stalker. Yes. I name her Death. She has a neutral nature and the Sniper ability. I would have preferred Battle Armor, which negates critical hits, but Sniper isn't bad, and before the Elite Four there's an item that ups critical hit chance, so maybe I can take advantage of that. Because Drapion is so important and Skaroopy is so fragile, I do everything I can to avoid sending it into battle before it evolves at level 40, so I train it with the EXP share. Now. I know Poop ambushes us before the gym, but if you're new to Platinum, this fight can really mess you up if you're not expecting it. Once again, he leads with Staravia, and I lead with Minoxide to take the Intimidate and hit Confuse Ray before switching out into Guano, but Staravia snaps out of it and goes for two double teams, but Guano is unfazed and hits both attacks and takes it out. Next up is Ponyta, or should I say, Pony- nope, nope, never mind. It goes down to a couple of wing attacks after just using Growl. Next in is a level 36 Printplup, which thankfully isn't fully evolved. What are you doing, man? So I switch an Ivy and take it down with two Giga Drains. Eventually that thing will be part steel, and no stronger flying type moves, so we'll have to think of a different strategy soon. Last is the knockoff version of Ivy, who gets taken down by Guano, and then Poop runs off in shame. Our level cap is now level 37, which is great, because Dark can evolve into a Toxicroak. I tried to hunt for shards in the underground so I can teach her Thunder Punch from the Move Tutor on Route 212, but that was taking way too long. Crash Awake is a serious threat. He's known as a potential run killer if you aren't prepared. You would think having a grass Pokemon as a starter would make this easy, but he leads with a Gyarados and his floats on those Ice Fang. I should have taken the time to get the shards to teach Dart Thunder Punch because this would have been a lot easier. I lead with Ivy against Gyarados and I decide to set up Leech Seed, but it avoids the attack and it hits us hard with Bite, which thankfully poisons due to the Poison Point ability. At this point I decide to set up Growth and another Bite takes Ivy low, so I go for Giga Drain which does about 2 thirds and a second one takes it out. But Ivy is about half health and Floatzel comes in. I do have the Quick Claw equipped to Ivy, but it's not worth the risk so I swap into Dart to take the Ice Fang. I go for a Sucker Punch which does decent damage, but Brine hits us with a crit and takes Dart to just 7 HP. I know that Priority Aqua Gen is coming next so I switch in Mothra who takes it pretty well and a crunch puts him at just 39 HP, and then Silverwind activates his Citrus Berry. In hindsight, I should have sent in Guano knowing that the Aqua Jet was coming and used Pluck to take the berry. I used Protect to scout the next move, which is another crunch, so I send in Guano who takes it, but he gets a defense drop. Great. I decide to use Confuse Ray, and Guano gets hit hard with Ice Fang and gets taken to just 6 HP and gets frozen. I'm in trouble. I send in Minoxide on the Aqua Jet, which does big damage, but she clutches a KO with Shadow Ball. If that didn't KO, he was certainly dead to Crunch. Last is Quagsire, but it isn't really a threat as Ivy's 4 times super effective Giga Drain takes it out in one hit. Wow, that was close to being a disaster. 
I think if I had switched in Guano instead of Mothra on the Aqua Jet and used Pluck, things would have gone a little bit better, but ultimately, we get the victory and we didn't lose anybody. We make our way through the fog and we get to Celestic Town, where it's time for our first battle with Cyrus. Looking at his team, it seems like it should be pretty easy. However, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have any way of taking care of flying Pokemon. As I'm recording this, I realize what I could have done was evolve Death into a Drapion, and then taught it Ice Fang from the Move Tutor in Pastoria. But because I'm an idiot, that's not what I did. I lead off with Dart against Sneasel. He hits us with Screech before going down to a Revenge. I leave in Dart against Golbat because Golbat's only flying type move is a special attack, and I know that Dart can take at least one even if it crits us. Sucker Punch does decent damage, and it hits us with an Air Cutter. Now I have to switch into Guano. He goes for a 55% accurate Supersonic, which of course hits us. So I swap into Mothra. I decide to risk the crit and go for a Psy Beam, and it takes Golbat into heal range. So I end up getting a clean switch back into Guano as he uses a Hyper Potion. This time around, I confuse him first. It hits itself three times in confusion, and Guano establishes dominance over the puny Golbat and takes no damage. Cyrus then sends in his Murkrow. I wasn't sure if Pluck was going to put it into Citrus Berry range, as I'd expected to be damaged at this point, and I didn't calculate it beforehand. So I decided to just take the Citrus Berry even at full health, but it wasn't in range, so I could have used Wing Attack. After trading a few Drill Packs and Wing Attacks, Guano takes down Murkrow, and Cyrus is defeated. During all of the hoopla, Cynthia's grandmother gave us the HM for Surf, so we can finally get our last team member, Tentacool. Fortunately, we find one at level 28, as it evolves at level 30. I catch her and I name her Manowar. I contemplated boxing Haunter because it's tough to find a safe switch in during important battles, and Dustox is a tank and can use Toxic and Protect and cheese out some victories against tough opponents. But ultimately I decide Haunter is more useful, so Mothra is relegated to the box. Manowar has a rash nature, which is plus special attack and minus special defense. Special defense is its best stat, however it's still going to be plenty bulky and the extra special attack is great. Now that I have Surf, I go around Sinnoh and I pick up a ton of useful items and TMs, including Thunderbolt, which I then teach to Monoxide. Probably something that would have been helpful before the Water Gym, but whatever. I grind up Mana War and I equip the EXP share to death, and finally, she evolves into the Grim Reaper. I head over to Canalave or Canalave City or Cantaloupe City, where a rematch with Poop looms large. This time around, his team is fully evolved so his Empoleon now has the Steel Typing. It also knows Aerial Ace. He's also added a Heracross to the team. He once again leads with Staraptor, but this time Monoxide knows Thunderbolt, and it's equipped with the Choice Specs, so he goes down easily. Next in is the Heracross, so I send in Guano, who tanks a Night Slash, and then Oko's with a Pluck. Rapidash comes in next, and I decide to go for a Confuse Ray, and it hits itself. Guano then goes for Fly, but it misses, and he hits us with Takedown. I switch into Mana War, who gets hit with a Takedown, the Rapidash outspeeds and goes for another, but it whiffs, and then we take it down with a Surf. Empoleon comes in next, and for whatever reason I wasn't anticipating an Aerial Ace, so I switch in Ivy on it, and it does about half. I then decide now is the time to unleash Death. His pathetic Aerial Ace does nothing, and Death takes him down with two hits from Dig. Last in is Roserade, so I send in Guano, and he goes for a Toxic Spikes. My name is Toxic. You fool! With Poop... Squashed? Ugh. We can head over to Iron Island. Before that, I use a couple of heart scales that I dug up from the underground to teach Ice and Fire Fang and Death for some much needed type coverage, as there's a trainer in the next gym that has a level 40 Scizor that can really be a problem if you don't have a fire move. I defeat the trainers in the gym before going over to Iron Island. I want to avoid over leveling on accident. We make it through Iron Island, and on the way out, I find a shiny stone, so I can finally evolve our starter into a Roserade. I head back, and we get ready to take on the Steel Gym. Byron leads off with a Magneton, but death is inevitable, and it goes down to a dig. Steelix is up next, and I'm so used to not treating these things as a threat that I switch Mana War in and completely space and we get hit with an Earthquake that would have killed us if it crit. Yikes. It does go down to a single Surf though. I know Surf won't Oko the Bastiodon, so now I have to switch out, and I send in Dart who gets crit by a Stone Edge but it doesn't do much. Then we hit a 4 times super effective revenge after taking another Stone Edge. We made it through the Steel Gym unscathed and I should be feeling pretty good but there are still a ton of difficult battles ahead. After leaving the gym, Poop forces me to go to a library, where Professor Rowan talks for a while, and the gist of it is I have to go take care of these weird cultists at Lake Valor, while Poop goes up to Lake Acuity. At Lake Valor, I make it through the grunts and I take on Saturn, but I forgot to switch Monoxide up front, so I accidentally lead with Guano. Guano takes her Crobat to the red, but then hits herself in confusion twice, and then takes a crit from an air cutter, and goes down to just 22 HP. I then correct my mistake, and send in Monoxide, who tanks an air cutter, and then takes out her Golbat. I leave Monoxide in, who takes out her Bronzor, 
two Shadow Balls. Last up is her Toxicroak, who is greeted by Death. It does hit hard with Mud Bomb, and it survives at 1 HP and takes us down to just 24, but Death outspeeds and finishes it off. This battle is a great example of how differently a run can go if you just get hit by an untimely crit. Don't be like me. Always play around critical hits. I head back home and then I challenge Mars to a rematch. This time I remember to put Minoxide up front, but Golbat survives with 1 HP from Thunderbolt and hits hard with Bite. Then a Shadow Punch finishes her off. Bronzor comes in, and I'm expecting extra sensory, so I swap into Death, but it goes for an Iron Defense. Fire Fang now doesn't do that much, and it goes for another, and then it confuses us. It ends up maxing its defense, so this takes quite a while, but eventually Death takes it out. Perugly comes in next, and I decide to stay in and use Bug Bite to take its berry before switching to Dart. Perugly hits us hard with Slash on the switch in. I go for a Brick Break, but it outspeeds, and it goes for Hypnosis, which hits. Great. Then I swap in Iguana, who gets crit by a slash, and another crit would KO us, but I risk it and I go for a Confuse Ray. Thankfully she hits herself twice as I swap into Ivy, who tanks a slash and KOs with Giga Drain. That was tougher than I thought it would be. After defeating the Galactic Commanders, I head up to Snowpoint to check on Poot, who taunts me because he can use Rock Climb and I can't, so I have to go defeat the gym in order to get up there and then kick his butt. After defeating the gym trainers and struggling to solve a puzzle that was designed for children, I make it to Candace. She leads with Sneasel, so I send out Dart who Okos with a 4x super effective Brick Break. Next is Pyloswine, and for some reason I went into Ivy here, and she gets hit with a crit earthquake and goes down to just 9 HP. Thankfully I know that Ivy outspeeds, and Giga Drain heals us back up while Pyloswine lives in the red, but fortunately it just goes for a stone edge for some reason. She heals and we take it to 1 HP with another Giga Drain, and then finish it off on the next turn. Next is her Frostlass, which thankfully came in before the Obama Snow. Now it doesn't get the boost in evasiveness from Hail. I send in Death who gets hit hard with a blizzard, but it can take another as long as it doesn't crit us. But she ends up missing her next one, and Bug Bite takes her Citrus Berry, but basically does no damage. It goes for a double team, and then another blizzard which leaves us at 26 HP. Less than is a Bomb of Snow, but now Death is too weak and I have to switch out. So I send in Dart, and it hits us with a Water Pulse which confuses us. So I switch in a Mana War anticipating another Water Pulse, but it goes for a Wood Hammer. I anticipate another Wood Hammer, so I send in Guano and thankfully I predict correctly this time. I risk a Fly missing, but it connects. Unfortunately, Obama Snow barely survives. Thankfully, she just goes for Woodhammer again. I know she's going to heal, so I go for a Pluck, but it doesn't quite do half, so I go for another Fly and risk another miss, but it hits again, and we defeat Candace. It wasn't the cleanest fight, but we got the victory. Now that I can use Rock Climb, I head up to Lake Acuity, where Poop is lost and he's crying about it, so I spare him the butt whooping for now, and realizing I'm going to have to do everything myself, I head over to Veilstone. Before taking on Team Galactic, I realize I now have enough shards, so I can make a pit stop at the Move Tutor and teach Thunder Punch to Dart. After Cyrus reenacts Zoltan's speech, I make my way up to him, and he says more words at me. And after a while, he decides to battle us. I lead with Dart again, and I Oko with Brick Break after getting hit with a Screech. Once again I stay in despite the defense drop, because Crobat's flying move is still a special attack. And Thunder Punch paralyzes, so now Dart can outspeed the second turn and finish it off. Last in is Honchcrow, so I send in Death to tank a Drill Pack. I go for an Ice Fang, which does less than half, but we get a Clutch Flinch twice in a row. I've been insanely lucky these last few battles. Cyrus then gives us the Master Ball for some reason, which seems weird, but alright. Thanks, I guess. In order to free the Pokemon, I still have to defeat Commander Saturn. And once again, I forget to switch out the starter, but thankfully Dark can two-hit KO with Thunder Punch. Bronzor comes in and I swap to Death, and this time it does go for the extra sensory. Now that it hasn't maxed out its defense, it goes down in two hits from Fire Fang. Blast up is her Toxicroak, and Death hits two hits from Dig and knocks it out. After a few sloppy fights, I spend quite a bit of time planning for the next part of the game because eventually my luck is going to run out, and I can't keep being this careless. I decide to teach the move Thief to Mana War in order to attempt to find a Krogunk holding the item Black Sludge, which basically works like Leftovers would. This takes an excruciatingly long amount of time, as Krogunk only has a 10% encounter chance, and it will only hold Black Sludge 5% of the time. Eventually I do find one, but like Leftovers, I limit myself to one per team. At this point, I need B-Barrel to use the HMs to get to the top of Mount Coronet, so I have to decide on which team member I have to leave behind. I decide on our starter, Ivy, because Cyrus's team is basically a perfect counter to her across the board. I'm dreading this fight, as it's known to be one of the most difficult in the entire franchise. I did a bunch of calcs, and I strategized for quite a while, and I think I came up with a pretty good plan for him. Before that though, I have to double battle with Poop, and take on Mars and Jupiter. Poop always leads off with his useless Munchlax, so I lead with Mana War so I could take it out with Surf, which hilariously just crits his Munchlax. Thanks to Light Screen, their Bronzor survived the next Surf, and I'm able to KO his Munchlax, and Rapidash comes in. This man leads with Staraptor against me every single time, but now... In the most important battle, you decide to lead off with a Munchlax? I should have kicked his butt after all. I swap into Death to avoid hitting Rapidash with Surf, and it KOs a Bronzor, 
and Paragli comes out. I steal its Citrus Berry with Bug Bite and Rapid Ash Fire Blast a 1 HP Bronzor. Seems like a bit much, but good job I guess. Golbat comes in and I use Ice Fang which freezes it. Nice. Reflect wears off, but then he Fire Blasts the Golbat and thaws it out. Then he gets hit by an Air Cutter and a Slash and he faints. Thanks for the help, Poop. Death takes down Golbat and Poop finally sends in something useful, Heracross, which hits a close combat and takes down the Perugly. Death then crits with a dig and with the sniper ability, absolutely destroys the skunk tank. Heracross goes down but Staraptor comes in and it's 2v1 so we take out the Golbat. Cyrus then summons Diaga and Palkia and the Lake Spirits appear in an admittedly interesting cutscene, but to save time I'm skipping ahead to the Distortion World battle. Cyrus leads off with Houndoom and I send in Man of War, who is a guaranteed kill with Sir. Honchkrow comes in next and I'm not sure what move it's going to go for, although I know it won't go for Heat Wave. So I send in Death hoping that it goes for a Psychic, but it goes for a Drill Pack. I go for Ice Fang which freezes AGAIN, wow, but it thaws out immediately, so there goes that, and then it hits us with a Drill Pack. It doesn't matter though because another Ice Fang takes out Honchkrow. Gyarados is next and it knows Earthquake so I swap in a Monoxide who has Levitate, and then a Choice Specs boosted Thunderbolt takes it out. Weavile comes in next and I expect a Night Slash so I send in Dart who tanks it well. But then he hits us with Ice Punch, which does quite a bit, but fortunately it goes down to a Brick Break. Last up is Crobat, and while I have Thunder Punch, I decide it's not worth risking Dart, so I send in Man of War who knows Ice Beam. It tanks a Crit Air Slash and then gets confused, but breaks out and does about two thirds with Ice Beam. I decide to switch into Guano because a Crit plus Confusion Damage might KO us. Guano comes in and tanks an Air Slash, then outspeeds and lands a Fly for the win. I can't believe how smooth that battle went. It really made a huge difference taking the time to plan beforehand, and I highly recommend it to anybody who is new to Nuzlocks. I then stare Garatina in the face, and do what any sane person would do if they saw that thing. I ran away. Now that Team Galactic is defeated, it's time to head over to Sunny Shore City. On my way I run into a guy who is attempting to do his own Pokemon challenge video using only Pikachu. It's time to take on Volkner. It's a shame the final gym is so anticlimactic, as his entire team goes down to a few ground moves. There isn't really much to say about this one, and there isn't really much to say about Victory Road, so I'm going to skip ahead to the last rival battle. This is our final battle with Poop. We lead off with Minoxide against the Raptor again, and take it out with the Thunderbolt. Empoleon comes in, so I swap into Dart, as Empoleon now knows Shadow Claw. And Dart takes it out with a single Brick Break. Rapidash comes in and Dart takes it down with Earthquake. So far so good. Snorlax comes in and Dart hits with a Brick Break, but it survives on a Sliver and... Oh no. Wow. When I saw Earthquake, I thought Dart was done for. I stare at the screen in disbelief for a moment, until Poop sends in Heracross, at which point I send in Guano. I know he has Rock Slide, but I risk it and go for a Fly, which connects and takes it down. Last in is Roserade, but it too goes down to Fly. I have a lot of training and planning to do before I'm ready to take on the Elite Four. Let's take a look at the team. I end up deciding on a level cap of 58, as Lucian's highest level Pokemon is 59. It's a bit tough to figure out a fair level cap sometimes, as the early members are a lot lower than us, but I'm under level going into the champion battle. I have a ton of TMs in the bag in case somebody doesn't make it to the end of a battle and I need to adjust my strategies, as well as a few to replace moves I won't need for later members of the Elite Four. I'm feeling pretty confident we can win. First member is Aaron, whose Yon Mega shamelessly spams double teams and boosts its speed with its ability. I go for a fly with Guano, which I thought would Oko, but unfortunately it survives with just one HP. Brutal start. Thankfully it can't really hit us all that hard, so I go for a bite to ensure the next fly will KO, but we end up missing due to all of the double teams. We manage to connect on the next one and get it out of the way. Drapion comes in next, so I swap into Dart to use Earthquake. It survives and it heals with its Citrus Berry, which is actually a good thing, because now he won't use a potion. After tanking the Aerial Ace, Dart finishes it off with another Earthquake. Next in is Scizor, so I swap into Death to use Fire Fang, who misses the 95% accurate move. Thankfully we land the next one though, and it KOs. Next up is Heracross, and I'm anticipating a Megahorn, so I send in Guano and it does indeed go for Megahorn. We then go for a Fly and we take out the Heracross. Last up is Vespaqueen, and I send in Manowar to get some EXP and level up before Bertha, and hit it with an Ice Beam. Then she goes for a bunch of Defense Orders and Heal Orders, so after a bunch of time wasted, eventually goes down to a combination of Toxic, Leech Seed, and Bites from Guano. One down. Next up is Bertha. I was trying to figure out a way to give Manowar the choice specs and make the battle work but she leads with a Whiskash, so I decided on leading with Man of War and giving her the Wise Glasses instead. Whiskash survives Giga Drain and then sets up a Sandstorm, which is good because now she wastes a potion on the Whiskash, who goes down to two more Giga Drains. Next in is Hapowdon, and this is why I taught Rain Dance to Man of War. Unfortunately, it hits us with a Yawn, and to avoid sleep, I switch into Guano to dodge the Earthquake, then swap back into Man of War on the Stone Edge, and then with the Rain Boosted Surf, takes down Hapowdon. Gliscor is in next and it's a pretty serious threat, but after Calx I know I outspeed and Oko with a 4 times super effective Ice Beam, and the last two Pokemon that come in go down to a Surf. 
two down. Flint is up next, and I really wish there was something to say here, but Choice Specs Tentacruel outspeeds the entire team and Oko's with Surf. His team has upgraded a ton from Diamond and Pearl, where he only has two Fire Pokemon. And while I'm glad the battle was easy for us, it really is a shame Fire Specialists are usually beaten exactly like this in every game. Surf is a necessary move to progress through the story, and it's arguably the best water move in the entire game. Fire Trainers deserve better. Next is the real threat. Lucian. Lucian's Psychic-type Pokemon pose a huge threat to our Poison team. However, we have Death. I replace Fire Fang with Swords Dance, and as long as Mr. Mime doesn't paralyze us with Thunderbolt, I can set up three Swords Dance and sweep his entire team with Crunch, all while healing back up holding Black Sludge. Bronzong is a two-hit KO without Fire Fang, but even with Earthquake, it'll never Oko us. Alakazam does outspeed us, which I forgot to consider, but thankfully it misses Focus Blast. That would have been bad. Death then outspeeds and Oko's Espeon and Gallade, proving how valuable setup moves are, and how valuable types that have an immunity are in a Nuzlocke. Here's the real test. Cynthia. Her team is terrifying. Her Garchomp is a notorious run-ender. This is the final battle, so I'm willing to sacrifice anyone in order to achieve victory. As long as one team member survives the battle, we win the challenge. Her Lucario is the biggest concern in this battle aside from the Garchomp, but the strategy remains the same as Lucian. Set up with Swords Dance on Spiritomb and hope I can sweep. I decide to teach Aerial Ace, as it's the only TM that I have that's physical that does neutral damage to Lucario. I also taught Toxic to Mana War and Protect to Ivy for Toxic Sol Strats. I set up three Swords Dance and go for an Aerial Ace, which does not Oko. At this point, I'm a little worried. We take it out, Garchomp comes in, and the moment of truth. We outspeed, and then we land a massive overkill critical hit Ice Fang and obliterate her strongest Pokemon. I immediately feel much better. Melodic comes out, but it's a special wall, not a physical one, and goes down to a cross poison. Tokugis comes in and quickly goes down to an Ice Fang as well. And out comes her Lucario. Black Sludge healed us up quite a bit, and I go for an Air Relays, and... Man, so close. Aura Sphere does big damage, but at this point, I basically can't lose. I decide to swap into Dart, knowing that she's going to heal, to try to preserve the Deathless attempt, and I go for Earthquake, which takes it low, and then finish it off with a Brick Break. Roserade is all that stands in our way. I send in Death anticipating an extra sensory, and instead of swapping to Guano, I decide to stay in and go for an Aerial Ace. Her Sludge Bomb takes us to just 8 HP, and one final Aerial Ace takes down Roserade, and we've done it. Wow. I had a ton of fun doing this monotype challenge. I've never done one before, and I really enjoyed using a few Pokemon I've never gotten to use, like Toxicroak. If you've made it this far in the video, please consider hitting the like button. I'm definitely going to do more monotype runs like this in the future, so if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below, or on Twitter, link in the description. If there's any particular challenge you would like to see, let me know. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you later.